Hello Internet, this is Oscar Release here today showing you how to use secret method. Why would you ever want to use another method since Newton's method is so great? Well, Newton's method has a big drawback. The big one being, the Newton's method requires that you know the derivative of the function that you're trying to find the root for. And for some functions, that derivative is rather complicated to find, such as this one, where the derivative is much longer than the original function. Therefore, if you don't want to have to use a derivative to approximate roots, but still want a method that's faster than bisection, that's where secant method comes in. The way it does things is it uses a secant instead of a tangent line like Newton's method does. Here's what secant method looks like. Notice that it has a similar form to Newton's method, only instead of where the derivative of the function would be, it instead approximates it using a secant line between two points. So secant method requires two points initially, rather than the Newton's method that requires one. Let's look at an example of sine of cosine of e to the x. Here we need to pick two points. So let's say we pick these two points. We'll call them x1 and x2. If we draw the secant between these points, the secant intersects the x-axis, which will give us our x3 point. Using x2 and x3, we can then draw another secant line. Notice that this one also intersects the x-axis, which gives us our point x4. Using now x4 and x3, we can draw yet another secant, and so on and so forth. This point we'll go ahead and call x5, and we can keep repeating this until we converge on another point. There is still the danger, though, that you can end up dividing by zero if the points you pick don't intersect the x-axis at all. So again, be careful when you're picking points. Here's another example. Let's try to find the root of the function x to the seventh minus a thousand. We'll go ahead and replace f of x with x to the seventh minus a thousand and plug it into our secant method. And we'll go ahead and also pick x1 to be 2 and x2 to be 3. We'll plug those values into the form that we came up with to get x3. Now by using x3 and x2, we can go ahead and come up with x4. By using x4 and x3 and so forth, we get x5. Continue to do so, we can gain more and more values. Notice that these last values, x8 and x9, agree on a few digits, and we'll go ahead and say that's our answer. Now let's talk about the order of secant method, like we have in other videos. Here, the order alpha is equal to the natural log of an error ratio divided by the natural log of another error ratio. So let's find the order of secant method. Given these three errors that we calculated using secant method, going ahead and plugging them into the equation from earlier, alpha ends up being about 1.61. Let's talk about order a little more. Notice that for our bisection, we alpha was 1. For secant, alpha is about 1.618. And for Newton's method, the order is 2. The higher the order, the faster the convergence. So why don't we always use Newton's method all the time since it has the highest order? Well, remember again that Newton's method requires a derivative, which we don't always want to have to find. So secant method is a good alternative. Then why use bisection at all? Well, secant method and Newton method both have the same issue where they may not converge on an answer and instead diverge. By using bisection, given an interval that contains a root, bisection will always find that root. Therefore, it's useful to know all three of these methods. Again, thanks for watching.